Hello, everybody. It's David R. Becker, and we're here on a Thursday night. Finally, I'm back, right? Um, I've been gone for a while doing these workshops around the country here. Actually, around the chain, not the chain of lakes, uh, the <laughs> Great Lakes. And we are back to do a Thursday night, uh, Thursday night paint along. On tonight's is this little lady in the field, and we're doing a little backlighting on this little girl here. All right, you know, yeah, you little girl, but it's a girl in the field, and she's from doing daisies. So this is the picture we'll be doing today. I already did it uh, this afternoon. We did it in my Thursday class. I do a Thursday class in Libertyville, Illinois, um, but we um, have that um, going. So I, I already practiced it and stuff, and I actually made a bunch of mistakes on it. So we're going to not make those, those same mistakes. And so we'll be here, and let's see. Um, one thing I want to uh, tell you is uh, that subscribe to my station here um, on YouTube. If you subscribe, um, then I can start doing these um, YouTube live videos and stuff. I think I already have that where I can actually do them, but you need so many subscribers. But also when I do an impromptu one, a lot of times I'm, I'm on the road and I'm going to be going in another week. I'll be uh, Next week we're going to have another one of these on Thursday, but I'm gone for three weeks. and So we'll probably do some on the road and on Thursday. And so sometimes I may do one impromptu. And if you are a subscriber, you will get that information from me really simply because I'll email you. I think, I think there's an email and I, I even will put it on Facebook a lot of times when I'm doing an impromptu kind of demo where I'm just kind of demoing. All right. So let's get going with this paint along. And so, um, let me just show you the supplies I'm using again. Let me just go right through this since I haven't done this in a while. These are my supplies that I work with. I work with Holbein watercolors. And um, I work with Holbein watercolors. Why? Because they are the best watercolor out there because they do not dry on your palette. They don't have ox gall in them. And so they will not dry to a hard clump like many of the others do. And their um, colors are extremely potent with a lot of um, pigment in them and very bright. And so that's, a, that's, a, that's the color I use. I use Stonehenge paper, which is a new paper that I used to use arches, but now I'm starting to use whole Stonehenge a little bit, a little bit cheaper. Um, not cheaper as in um, grade of paper. It's a high quality grade of paper. It's sized internal and on surface. And um, it's a 100% cotton paper also. And it has a kind of nice texture on it. I like it because you can wipe out a lot of things on there. Uh, the masking fluid I'm using is Holbein also. And uh, my brushes, of course, my brushes I use are the nylon brushes. And you can get them on my website. And you can get them at beckerart.net or davidartbecker.com. You can get those brushes right down here. See right there? You can get those brushes right in that area right there. All right, let's get going with our um, painting here tonight. And I've actually been using a lot of um, difficult, I guess, subject matter. Um, but I've been told by a lot of you who want to do these paintings that you want to be tested. And um, you're kind of liking the little bit more difficult ones. I don't try to do ones that you, I know you can do. I mean, you're not going to learn from those. So I'm making them a little bit more difficult so that you can learn something. And this one we're going to learn today is about how to keep, um, I mean, there's a lot of light in this picture, but I'm going to be doing a lot of changes when it comes to some of the color and lighting. And I put a, a color one up there, and usually I, I like to put a black and white picture up there so that I don't be um, persuaded by the colors that are in the um, picture. Because a lot of times you want to change the colors to what you make what you feel will make it better, a better painting, not a photograph. We're not making a photograph, we're making a nice painting out of this. And so the one I did this afternoon, and I'll show you here, um, what happened was um, I just came back from the class and I saw that I used too light a green. And it doesn't show here, but I used a lime green. And there was nowhere else a lime green. And so that ends up being looking really kind of bad. And so um, we're gonna, I got rid of that. I put a little wash over that. And my dress was too light because the composition suggests that I need the background dark and she's dark. And in the photograph, that's how you see the photograph, right? And so you have to make that the darks. And otherwise, it doesn't give that glow effect. So this time, what I'm going to do is um, I did this as an afterthought. After I got it all done, I put this up on after. So it's not as fresh as it could be. So this time, we're going to try to make it a little bit fresher than what I did this afternoon. So we're going to start out with the background. And the colors, I'll suggest the colors that I'm using. Or I'll tell you the colors I'm using as I go along here. And if you have any questions, put them up there in the chat. I will take a look every once in a while. I'll look up and see if there's a chat and see if there's anybody watching. 
maybe there's nobody watching even <laughs> so I'm talking to myself right <laughs> so um, but if you have any questions or anything again just ask me and I will get to them either now or later and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wet the background and all the flowers I oh I forgot to tell you I did put my masking fluid on here if you can tell the masking fluid see the masking fluid right here it's the blue the little light blue and I used hold by masking fluid which is a nice liquid um, it's not as thick. It's very liquidy, and you don't have to put very much on it. And so I did that right onto the flowers. I put them in there because I'm going to do a big wash over the flowers, so I don't want to be sitting there doing around each one of those flowers. So I'm going through. Same thing with right here in the back of her head. If you look at the picture, it's white. And so to keep that white, I'm just going to put the mask right down. And you can do the same. Now, for these little lights that you see back here in the picture uh, above on the left there, you see those little white things? I'm either going to try to go around those or I'll plop a little bit of white in there or I'll rub those out afterwards. But um, there's many different ways of doing that, but we're just going to wet everything. And I'm going to actually do this as I wet as I go along. So I'll start on the left because if I wet everything around, by the time I get down to this spot, it's going to be dry. So what I'll do is I'll start over in this corner, left up corner up here. Bring it around. Bring it around her hat. Her hat has a white edge. And now I don't have to worry about the hair here because I've got masking fluid on right there. And we'll just go like this. If there's a problem with the video or the sound, please also let me know about the video or sound. A lot of times I, I can't quite tell if the sound is good, but if it is something going wrong, just please let me know. I will take care of that as quickly as possible. So now I wet it with just water. And um, I'm going to go in here, and um, Gary's here with me today to give me a, a thumbs up that the sound is okay. So that's good. I like to keep it, keep it, keep it good. So now this part is a dark area right here, um, but it's okay to do that right now because normally I go from light to dark. But I'm starting this corner so I can go around this way, so I'm not going into my into my work. So this way, as I come around, my hand will never be close to this. So and as I'm coming around this way, and this actually needs to be dark, so. I can make darks in there right away. It doesn't need to be, um, you, you have to go light to dark because I'm not putting anything on top of that. So I can do that right away dark. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna take a little Cronechinum gold, which is I make my greens and some Prussian blue. I'm gonna make a nice dark green. I'm gonna add a little bit more green to this one than I've done this afternoon because I felt like my one this afternoon wasn't quite um, didn't have the darkness and it didn't have the right colors, I think. So we're just going to try to change it up a little bit. And actually, you know, sometimes it's fun to do a painting twice. Um, you always kind of tend to learn from the first painting. That's basically a sketch, you know, a sketch that I do. And it's not a bad painting, but it's just not what I expected as I was doing it. And I'm going to go around some of these lights that you see in the picture. See, you see in the picture is really light. I'm kind of going around them. And this is wet, so the paper's wet first. Remember, paper's wet first, and I am I'm getting my darks. And remember, it's going to dry 20% lighter. It's going to be 20% lighter than what you see right there right now. Because once that water disappears or evaporates, it's going to be light, 20% lighter. Because it's whatever pigment's left that you have on, the, on your board right there. And so you want to really pick up enough pigment. And the more pigment you pick up in a wet wash, the more you can control it, too. So I can, go, I can do those little round things and stuff. And actually, you can put other colors in there, too, in your dark. Once it's dark, you can actually throw the light colors on top of it. Just make it a little bit thicker. So I just did a workshop, and I'm going to be doing one in, um, in two weeks up in Dillman's. That's an acrylic workshop. And we use these um, fluid acrylics. And we use the fluid acrylics like we're doing watercolors. And the nice thing about that is that when I'm done with this first wash, it's permanent and it stays on there where watercolor doesn't stay permanent. But if you take this class, like from um, the acrylic class and go back to watercolor, you start learning that you can use paint a little bit thicker than you normally do as a watercolorist. Most of my watercolor students, I don't think use enough pigment in their brush when they're, it's like almost too much water at all times. So don't be afraid of pick, picking up enough pigment. And I think if you take an acrylic class, you tend to learn that. You tend to learn to put a little bit more pigment in your brush because it's like it's a little bit thicker and some of it, some of the stuff is a little bit thicker because I use the heavy bodied and the fluids and inks actually, ink acrylics. So I'm going across here trying to get some of these things in there. 
and I'm just making it dark. And by making it dark, it also then will pop this little girl out. It'll pop her out into the scene. Go around the hat. And I can get lighter as I go through the center because you see how light it gets over here. And now I know it looks really dark, but I need to have it a little bit darker than what you think because, again, it's going to try 20% lighter. And then I'm going to put the color in there. I'm going to drop color into that. It's always a shock to people when they see when it dries, how dry it does get. So it has to look 20% darker than you want it. Basically, you got to make it look a lot darker. So here we're going to go with the yellows and keep this still nice and dark. The more pigment, remember, the more pigment you use with the amount of pigment on your brush compared to the water is how you control the edges. You can control an edge to almost make it hard edge, a soft, harder edge. And so on this photo, you see there's kind of a background. The background there is kind of straight across. I don't like that. I did that here, and it got a little bit too harsh. You see how harsh that is? That, to me, is too harsh a line. And so this time, I'm going to make it soft edge coming down here. So I learned something from the first wash, and now I'm going to take it to the second, um, to the second painting and not do that same mistake. So I'm going to go around here now. And I also noticed that I made that a little bit too light on this side, so I want to make it a little bit darker on this side. But get that light glow right in here. See how that glow is in there? So I'm going to try to get that glow this time also. And you can put light colors on top of dark colors. So that little bit of um, I, those little light things, how about like this? I'm putting pure yellow and white on there and just letting it drop into these washes to get those little edges, to get those little round dots that you see in the photo. Now, it didn't get dark enough. Yeah, or it didn't get, um, it wasn't wet enough to do this, so I'm going to put a little of that in there. There we go. So now I'm going to come on this side, and now this is not wet yet, so I'm going to wet it. Wet it up here, wet it up on this side. And I'm going to make it nice and light in, at first. And one thing about yellow, you really got to watch out for yellow, because yellow tends to be so vibrant. And to tone it down, you can take a little bit of lavender which is kind of weird because you, you think it's like, oh, my God, lavender on top of it. But it's, it's complimented. It's, so I put that on there, and it'll tone down the brightness of it. And you can also use like a, a pink, and that will also tone it down a little bit. But you got to get rid of some of that really bright, bright color because otherwise your eye is just going to go boom right in that area. And it really isn't a bright yellow. It's just a bright light over there. So that's almost a little bit too yellow. Really watch your yellows. Yellows are hard to use um, if you're going to use them pure. And a little orange. Orange sometimes doesn't look like a shadow of yellow. That's the problem is that people think that you can use the yellow or the orange to shadow the yellow, but it really isn't a shadow color because it's, it's basically a whole different color. So it doesn't kind of tend to look like a shadow when you're using yellow. Best to use a color like um, its complement with a little bit of the yellow because it dulls down the yellow and makes it a little bit darker. See how it makes it look like a little bit darker? It's the same yellow, but just dulled down. I'm not sure if that makes sense, but um, I just kind of picked that up because I, I, we were doing sunflowers in my last workshop. And uh, when you're doing sunflowers and you use this brighty yellow, it's really hard to put a shadow in there and make it look like it's bright unless you have some white in, in, the, in the thing. If you have some white on the actual, actual sunflower, then it looks like it's a shadow. So you need white to make it look really bright and vibrant. Now this time I get a little bit darker on this side because it is a little bit darker when you get to this side of here. And I will put a little bit of an edge, but not as hard as I did in the last one. Again, remember, the more the pigment, the more pigment you use, the more pigment you put down on your brush. And don't make your brush wet. See, I'm tapping it down to my paper, or my um, cloth here. I'm, tipping it, I'm taking pure pigment, and I'm just using pure pigment in a water wash. This wash is wet. And I'm keeping this brighter right on here, really light. And there it went in a little bit, but I can rub that out or put white paint over that. I'm keeping this part. And actually, that's still really wet right there. So watch this. I can actually use white, white paint. I'll just get in there and get a lot of white paint. And I'll take a little white paint and almost make it look like it's blurry there by just getting soft edges of white. I know you can get it with the, with the paper, and um, but it doesn't hurt sometimes to also use white inside the wash because it gives you that soft edge 
and actually it's not white white it's kind of like a tan then and actually looks better than white because sometimes everything white is not good either it's kind of too hard an edge especially if you use like in these areas if you used masking fluid to get that white that's too hard an edge and actually if it's like um, i can rub this up and get some of those things out also now when i go down to here i'm going to wet as i go along so i'm doing the whole background yet i'm still working on the background i'm getting the whole background done as i come around to the edge get and this is done so remember when you get don't leave that area until it's done as you're moving yourself along get it done don't come back to that area it's very important that you know that that you do not go back into an area try not to i mean there is you can but you you don't want to what's that gear <laughs> could you give me a spray bottle I, I don't have a spray bottle here right there on the table there i'm looking for a spray bottle because that's it I noticed I didn't have one here, and it's always good to have a little bit. Hold by makes this great spray bottle here. Thank you, Gary. So Hold by makes this great spray bottle where you can take and wet an area or even make little dots on it. It's like a mister. They call it a misting. It's a it's more a spray bottle, but it's more like a mist. You put a mist of, of color in there. So down here, I'm taking yellow, but I'm putting a little white in the yellow. I know it makes it kind of chalky, but I think I like that chalkier look of yellow more than I like the the um, pure yellow. So that's a way of getting rid of that really bright, bright color of yellow, that intensity. And sometimes you do need that intensity, but I don't want to have that intensity on this one this time. Because um, I want to keep it all kind of like soft edged and I want to have it a little bit grayer the background than I did this last one. And I'm not using lime green this time. I'm going to use a little bit of a more of a muted green, more of a natural green. Is that lime green it's that doesn't look so natural so see i'm using a little bit more grayer green and then it'll make her flesh tones and everything look much brighter too so if you're using grays it helps out to your other tones also so don't always feel that you have to make everything super rainbow like you can use some grays and it will make your colors that you do put in look really nice and vibrant down here it's a little bit more I didn't wet it at first, so I'm getting some of these little hard edge whites, which is fine. I'll get a few of them in there. And I'm not going to go over the hand or the arm because then the green and the and the flesh tones will kind of make it look dirty. So that's one where I'm just going to stay away from a little bit. Come down this way. And then you can also float other colors in here. You know, you can float it. Remember my floating. Float your pigments. The yellow I'm using, somebody asked for the yellow. Um, I'm using a permanent yellow light, permanent yellow light, and this orange is a orange yellow, permanent yellow orange, um, so it has a little bit of yellow, that orange in it. And somebody asked me if I always use um, reference, do you always follow a photo? Yes, I mostly follow a photo, but I don't follow it to a T. I kind of use it as reference, basically, and I'm making a painting, and so I, I change whatever I have to to make it a nice painting. Because there's times when you're doing a um, photograph and there's a lot of things wrong with it. And so I change it. I make it, I'm doing a painting. I'm not doing a photograph. I'm not copying it to a T. And so that's one of the reasons I always tell students that when you take your photograph, that's fine. But don't have to copy everything out from the photograph. You don't have to copy the color. You don't have to copy, because a lot of times the color is going to be different anyways. By the time you get it all in a certain phone, we'll have a certain... My phone makes everything look like a postcard. It makes it way too bright a color. I've noticed that with the Samsung. They have this, like, it's like a feature. I'm not sure. If I use the professional setting, then it doesn't. But So now this whole background is almost almost complete. I'm just going to go in here. And the photo definitely says that this area right here is lighter. So I'm going to keep that lighter. I'm going to keep this area lighter. And so I'm putting a little bit of yellow with a little bit of white. Again, to tone down the white because I don't like that really bright, bright yellow. I just started doing that too. So if you guys, um, you probably never heard me say that before, but I just started to use it because we did that sunflower and I just noticed a couple of things. So I'm learning myself a lot of times when I teach, I, I, I realize certain things that I'm teaching, uh, how to then teach you guys. I never really thought about the yellow like that. So, okay, so there we got the background, so pretty much. And now we're gonna go, um, what's the next thing? It'll be our hat because I'm going from light to dark. 
and I got the background all done. And actually, even some of the foreground almost all done. So the masking fluid is going to show my flowers. See how it's repelling? And you already see my flowers. And they're going to be white because I'm going to pull the masking fluid off of there. When it's dry, don't do a lot of sweat. That's really no-no. And so now I will go into her hat for this next lightest thing. And then we'll do a little bit of the hair back here behind the dark hair. We'll get that. And then we'll go into the... Um, the flesh stone. So use a little bit smaller brush for the hit, for the hat because it's a smaller one. And at the same time, I, I dripped in here a little bit, so I'm going to rub that out. The nice thing about the Stonehenge paper is is that I can rub out. See how easy it was to rub that little piece out there? There was a little bit of a drip right down there, but um, it doesn't absorb as much paint as like an arches does. It sits on top a little bit. And look at this little little white wetness I have there. It's kind of neat. It's going to look like your hair maybe. Like you get happy accidents like that once in a while and get stuff like that. Now you see how this went away, the light, light spots went away. I can go in there later with a small brush and just kind of rub it out and get it back to white paper. And that's what I like about this paper compared to like an arches. Arches sucks it in so much that it's hard to get the, the white back of the paper. Um, the muted the green um, with a little bit of um, red earth tones, with a little brown, because you always use a compliment when um, Everett said, um, he asked me, how do I mute the greens? Um, I mute them with the compliment. So red and green are compliments. Um, yellow and violet and purple are compliments. And same thing with orange and blue. I'm not using any blue in this. So um, there is a little bit of orange, but this is more orange yellow. I'm thinking I'm thinking it more towards the yellow part. All right, let's get this hat going. So I'm going to wet it a little bit. I'm going to take like a nice lavender in there. Maybe a little bit of this green I already have on my palette. A lot of times, look at your palette. See what you have, because this is all going to be incorporated into this into this girl. So you want to use some of that that color that you already used and get it into that area that you already painted. Or get that color that you already painted into that area you're not, and I was new. Even, I don't care what color this hat is, you want to get some of that in there, because it's going to, auto, it's going to reflect. It's going to have, like, automatically reflect into that hat. It's going to be part of the hat, and you can make it. I don't care if that hat was yellow. It's basically a white hat is what it sh shows like. But now notice this corner. That's too dark, right? Because I, it's got. It's supposed to be like a bright thing. So I'm just going to rub it out a little bit, rub it, and make it look like it's really shiny right there. But first, I put the water down there so I get the hard edge, and then I soften the edge with just water, and then it, it gets darker as it goes around here. And it's not even that dark. But remember, this is going to dry 20% lighter. You got to have that in your head at all times. And that is the hardest thing I think I, I can teach. I get everybody to do their washes right and everything, but I just, the hardest thing for me to teach is, and myself included, is that a lot of times I don't use the right value because by the time it dries, it dries 20% lighter, and then you don't got the exact value you wanted. So you actually got to make it look wrong to make it right. You got to make it look 20% darker than you really think it's going to be to make it come back down to the color value that you want. I know it sounds weird, but it's one of the hardest things that I um, teach myself and my students. It's hard for you to make something look wrong and too dark. It's like it doesn't seem natural to do that. But with watercolor, because once the water dries, it becomes lighter. All right, so there's the hat a little bit. And I can put texture in there later. There's like little holes, dots in it, like a kind of like a... So we'll do that. And so now we're going to go in with my little smaller number eight brush. Um, somebody's Jill, Jill's asking about, is it 300 number? What's the 300 number? Um, uh, it's 300 pound paper. It is the paper is 300 pound. If that's what you're asking. Yes. So now we're going to go do some of the hair and I'm going to use the hair in the back. It's going to be aerial perspective. So even though her hair is probably dark in the front, well, it's a blonde. So she, it's kind of brownish, tan hair, but since I use some orange and yellow here, I can use a little bit of that in the hair that's behind her, like in the background. So I'm going to do little swirlies, and um, do not make the hair straight down. It just looks. A couple of people do that in class, and it doesn't look good. <laughs> um, this, you know, it looks better when you have curls. Like I think that's why the girls put the little curls in the hair so they look better. And so a couple of people in the class this afternoon made just straight hair. 
and it just didn't have the nice um, look as it did when you put a little bit of curl in it. Even a little bit of wave is good, um, but just straight, straight down just didn't give it the right kind of look of a, of the scene, how it looks. I know it sounds kind of weird, but it's just, um, they had done kind of just straight down lines and it just didn't have that same feel. Now the hair back here too is a little bit lighter. That's um, right where it hits the white. You get a little bit lighter. And you actually, what you can do also up here is I'm gonna right away put a little bit of this color into the area of the hair so that when you do the uh, bigger washes, it'll kind of, you can use that light for later to, um, so that it has underneath the darks. It'll be underneath the dark. And so you just put this in there. I'm doing that wet in the wet so I get soft edges. You don't want all the hair to be hard edged because then you give your hair way too much um, viewing it's going to be way too much you don't want to have that kind of you give too much hard edges upper right on my palette over here this is lavender and lilac and this right here is a um jaune number two jaune and this is a brilliant pink shell pink permanent yellow light and so now we've got the hair light hair and now we're going to go into the flesh tones so right away because the flesh tones are lighter than the the dress they're kind of the same but um the the arm up here is a little bit lighter and then the dress is a little bit lighter but if you look at the photograph and you can figure the photograph on my website by the way it's in there if you click on it you can just um click on the photo that i have on my front of my website and then um, it'll, go, it'll give you a big large picture of it i finally figured out how to do that but if you look at this, um, you squint your eye at the dress, at the picture, you see that this is actually a value, a dark value. I know it's yellow and white, the dress, but if you keep it at the value that you think it is, it's going to be way too light. It's going to be way too light, and it's not going to give you that, that feel of the dark. This is part of the composition, that this is dark, this is dark, and then the, coming right down here is dark, and this is the light. This is the light area. She's the dark area. So you have to keep that in mind that you have to put, do that because it's all about number one most important thing is a drawing. That's the number one thing you have to do. The drawing is number one. Secondly is the composition and how it works with lights and darks. You need to make those lights and darks good. They need to be on. They need to be like if it's a certain value, it can be any color you want it to be, but the value has to be there. Sometimes people will use the color as a, a way to make it come forward. Now you can do that too, but most importantly is try to get some of the values to look right it's so important to get the values now i'm doing the arm i'm kind of going doing particularly the arm and then when i drew this up on the drawing her dress is right up to her armpit and so i gave her a little bit more down because if i did it right to the armpit it looked like her arm extended farther so i came down with the dress a little bit so it didn't um, look like her arm just went way back so now i'm wetting the arm with the um, color I'm using, what color am I using? I'm using a burnt sienna or like a terracotta type of color. I'm using a little bit of orange and I use a little bit of pink. And then I just throw that in there. And then I look to see if I feel that's a, a good enough color for that area. And um, I also looked at the area and I look at the area around it. And it's like, could I use another color from what's around it? And I, yes, I could. So I can use some of the yellows, the orange and stuff like that. But this arm on the bottom, if you look, is very dark. And so I'm just putting the wash in there right now. Yes, yeah, squinting at the photo is a good way of doing it. Um, you learn how to um, see values on a photograph by squinting. So here now, now I have it wet. Now I can go and form it. I can just use form it. I can. The color um, is red, so if I use more of a greenish color, which is actually down here, the yellow is kind of a green, it makes it kind of a brown. I can go in there and make it, um, it, it seems weird to put green into a flesh tone, but it's the flesh tone is like orange, so I can put blue, but I'm going to use a little bit of green because I have a little bit of green down here, so that can go into the flesh tone. Don't be afraid. It's just going to make a brown. Anyways, it's just basically going to make a brown. Hear that, Gary? It's a brown <laughs> a little thing going with browns or you can put a violet in there that's another thing i see you put in there so i'm gonna put a little yeah. violet <laughs> so and you can also put make it thicker see what i'm doing is i'm 
if you use enough pigment, you can like sculpt it. You can go in here and it's wet. And if you use enough pigment, you can push it and it's going to soften itself, but you can use thick enough pigment and make it a really nice, um, really nice rounded look. And you can have the right value. I'm putting a little bit thicker in there of the red. The whole bottom arm, if you look at the drawing, is it pretty, pretty dark. And so you want to get in the first wash. You don't want to go back in over and over again. You want to do it now. I'm going to get it done now and leave it. Go around that flower a little bit. Get the... And while it's wet, too, you get all the soft edges. So you have to get it right away. Get the soft edges. Get all that stuff done now. Don't go back in thinking you're going to wipe something out or rub it. or No, just whenever you can get the thing done in one wash where it's wet in the wet, that's what you want to do. Because it's so much more important to get that than trying to go over and over and because then you're just going to make it look um overworked if there's a color a reflected color i'm gonna do that right now too so i'm gonna put a little bit of um pink and put a little pink a little bit thicker pink pink has a little bit of white in it so i'm gonna put that in there just to give it a little bit of a glow right here in the edge a little glow and it's going to soften itself. I do not have to soften an edge. It's wet, so it's going to soften itself up. Now this green over here, I'm going to put a little bit more green down here so it reflects into the bottom of there. And I know it seems weird to put green on an arm, but like I said, it's reflecting from the grasses below. So there's your arm. We'll take that same color and do right over here by your neck. Do that right away. And it glows to a light, a light pinkish color as it goes forward here. So I can get that in there right away. And I know the dress is kind of dark too, but this is easy enough to do, to go through that area and just um, kind of paint, paint around things. And then the hair is going to cover this, so I can go right into the hair with the flesh tone because it's going to cover up with darker hair. The hair is dark, the darkest part of her, along with the elbow here, but that's already done, so we don't have to worry about that. Now we're going to go right into her face, and when you're doing the face, don't feel like you have to do little parts. Do the whole face as one. Wet it all as one. Wet it with a nice um, like middle tone of what's going to be there. And then you can add darks to it and then lift for a little bit of light areas. See, I'm going over everything. I'm going over. I'm going to leave a little bit of a light on her nose right here. Kind of. Oh, did I have my finger in the way? So I'm going to go right here. And the outside of this face is going to have dark hair, so I can create the shape with the dark of her hair. So I don't need to get that um, shape exactly right yet. I can wait for that. I'm going down to the chin. Put a little bit of this through here. And um, that's all one value now with one color. Now I sculpt it like I do everything on, like I did the arm. I go back in and I get maybe a little bit darker on top. And don't use water in your brush. You can't have water and water and water. It just makes everything a mess. So you need enough pigment. And I probably should have done that hand. I'm just looking at the hand now. I should have been done while I was wet. So that had to be a little darker right in there. And that's still good. That'll probably give me a little bit of watermark because it's starting to get damp. But go in, undry your, make your brush dry, and then pick up pure pigment because it's wet here already. You don't need to have more water. The more water, it's just going to mess all everything up because you're going to put way too much water in there. So if you have to feel what it is, then just go like this. See how on my palette I can get a dark right here? Now, it's not going to be that dark because I'm putting it into water, so it's going to lighten up a little bit. Again, it's going to lighten up. Remember? So I'm going to just go in here and get the little darks in there, a little bit of there. And if it's too dark a color, you know, you feel it's too dark, then grab another color. Like here, I'll grab this little pink or a little orange in there and put that into the, into the mix right there. And again, I'm using it pretty thick. I don't have much water in my brush at all. My brush is basically just damp. And so the side of her nose is going to be a little bit darker underneath her eye there. And so I'm sculpting again. I'm, I'm using the brush with a lot of thick paint to sculpt my edges. And then this edge will be made with the dark hair. So I don't actually need to make the outer edge of her yet. I can put, this is going to be dark hair, too. Why I'm going and stopping right there, it's going to be dark hair on top of this. So, um, But there is a couple of light hairs going through there, so I, I guess that's okay to pull a couple of those. 
All right, so we're going to leave it at that. Oh, underneath her chin, too. A little bit dark underneath her chin. And I'm not even looking at the photo for this. I know that underneath the, underneath the lip would be a little bit darker, and the side of her mouth would be darker. And that's drawing. That's knowing how to draw a, a person's face. So a little bit of knowledge on how to draw um, a face and stuff always helps because it may not look like that in the photograph because it may not give you everything that you want in the photograph. So you make it better than the photograph. The photograph sometimes may have a reflect, light, light reflecting in a place that will make it look weird. And, and then what basically what we'll do is once this is done, we'll put lipstick on her, put um, mascara on her, and the ladies will be really good at that. I'm not that good at that. I've never put it on. But you'll be really good at putting makeup on her, basically, is what you're doing to show what she looks like. So here we go. We're going to soften this edge here. All right, I do have some masking fluid there too, right by um, her dress is forward a little bit. So that's light. So that'd be cool. And now we're going to do the dress. Now we're doing the dress. And actually, I hope that's dry already. Yep, that's dry. So now the dress is a lot darker than you think. And so I'm going to wet this whole bottom part and I'm going to kind of sculpt it also. So I'm wetting in here. Right around here, wetting it with my big brush. And I know there are some folds in it, and the folds are very light in the picture. But if you squint your eye and you don't see those folds, that means you cannot paint it lighter. Nothing in this dress can be as light as in the light area. It has to be darker than the light area. Otherwise, it doesn't read as a dark. It doesn't read as a shadow. It will read as if it dresses in the light. Very important. Number two important thing in the painting Follow the values sketch. Follow the values. So now I know that there's a bunch of different kind of colors in that dress. And so I'm going to put the light color in first, which is actually the dark color. Um, it's a, I'm a lavender. It's like it's going to be the shadow of a white. It's like kind of lavender. I'm going to put that here and there. And I'm not getting any hard edges because I just wet it all, right? So I'm, I'm going to get all soft edges unless I use it thick. Unless I thicker I use it. And so that's that's way too light, and it looks it looks really uh, light. I mean, it looks kind of dark when you're putting it down, but again, it's going to drive it lighter. So don't be afraid of the dark. Don't be afraid of the dark. Let's make that purple a little bit darker. Make the light edges. Squint at it. Squint, like Everett said. Squint at it. Any other questions we got up here? Let's see, did I miss any? Yeah. Anybody still watching? <laughs> Let's see what we got here. All right, we still got people watching. That's good. That's good. All right, so let's go into the dress and see how I'm doing the. This is the light parts of the dress. So this is the light part. Even though I'm putting a dark value on it, this is the dark part of this dress, or the light part of the dress. Even though I'm putting it down, it looks dark because it is a purple. And then I put a little bit of earth tone in there, a little bit of yellow because there's yellow. Basically, the dress is yellow and white and has black little things on it and stuff. But you decide on what color you want the dress. You can do it anything you want. And so I'm going to make it a little bit, maybe a little bit more orange. But I got to make it this time. I have to make it a little bit darker. It just was just way too light last time. So I'm going to really get in there this time and try to get in the first wash. Because the first wash is when you get all the beautiful washes. I mean, that's when you get the beautiful watercolor look. And that's what you want with watercolor. You want that beautiful watercolor look. It's what everybody strives for is that fresh, fresh watercolor look. That's what makes watercolor watercolor. It makes it look so great is how fresh it looks and how... And you do that pigment and it just floats in there and you get that beautiful granulation happening. That's what you want in watercolor. That's what it's known for. And that's how come it looks so cool. And so that's why you get that. You get that kind of look like that. I'm here for the mask right there. So I'm going to keep that light right there. Okay. You guys are still watching? All right. Thanks. And so we're going to come here. Let's see what time is it. How much more time? Ah, only 7.09. We got plenty of time. So we'll go in here and we'll do a little bit more orange, maybe a little darker. And yellows are coming, but the yellows are not like yellows you think. 
in the dress, it actually looks like it's bright yellow, but it's not. It's not yellow. Um, you may think it is, but uh, put your put your hand over just the area of the dress and black out the light areas, and you'll see it's it's like those things they have on um, that. You know, what is it? Brain games. They have a thing where you you put a little piece like that, and you can see the color. And it's different from when if you put your hand over one side or the other. I have to put that on my website one time to show you guys. Things look different when in a shadow if you cover up the light area. So it's more of a um, I'm using the yellow, a gold, and the um, lavender. And that gives you more of a realistic yellow that's light. It's the it's the dark and shadow yellow. And then I use pure um, lavender for some of the light, the light area. I know I'm not getting quite the look of that dress with the folds, but is that dress really that important? To, it's about his area. So I'd rather have um, work a little bit harder on this area than having to get every single fold exactly like it is in the photo. I'd rather just be the, do the beautiful watercolor wash if I can't get exactly what I'm looking for in the in the dress. It's hard getting those folds sometimes and getting the soft edge, hard edges working exactly right. So it looks like she has, um, it's a little bit darker right in here, right underneath, it's folding. And then we have a, a fold here. So you get the darks afterwards, and this is all still wet, so I have plenty of time just to get in there and mess around. And then squint your eye at it. Is your eye, when you squint, is it going to look like the photograph? Does you, Do you see the same type of values? I'm stressing that a lot because this picture is all about getting that backlit look, the backlit and making it look like it's really shiny behind her. And so you need to do that. You, you have to make this dark, otherwise it doesn't give you that look. Yeah, one thing about um, working online like this is um, somebody said that their, their violet looks like blue. And um, I did a workshop at Cheap Joe's one time and his he had a monitor for his um, for the demonstrations in class, and um, the yellows were like green, and so you have to adjust your TV every once in a while to adjust your TV or your monitor to get it to look like something in front of you. So that's something that you pretty much can do. I think there's even settings that you can do on your monitors to make it look more realistic. On a TV, like I'm, if you use a TV, you just have to kind of look at it and then put the painting next to it. So here, and I noticed that this is an arm. I forgot that arm back there. There's an arm that I forgot totally put in this afternoon. So there's an arm right back here. It's lighter. So I'm just going to put this arm back in there. And it's going to be nice and light. It's going to be earth tones or the flesh tones. I mean, not earth tones. <laughs> Maybe like a tree. No. All right. So there's her hand. Now the front of her dress inside is lighter than is shining through a dress over here and so the front side is a little bit darker has a little bit of violet to it which is weird because it's white and so you're going to get a little bit of violety pink or yellow you can use the yellow that you used on, out here and so you can use that out in there so it looks like it's glowing this part is like glowing in there so it's got that glow in here and then have a little bit of that orange that's back here I didn't put a pattern on it yet, and you can do that too, but always do the pattern of the dress, like there's some black stripes or whatever. Do that after, after. Uh, it's too hard to do it while it's wet, for one thing. You don't want it, um, all those things right away anyways. You want to wait for that. Wait for the pattern until later when it's dry. And if you do want the pattern soft edge, you can still wet it along while you're um, doing a hard edge. You can just wet it. Now that was a little bit um, too dark, so I'm just gonna you know, put a little bit of yellow white on that. Just gonna blend that into there. Again, don't be afraid to whiten your colors and make them more pastel. I know in school you've always been told never use white, but if you are lightening a color, it's just like the manufacturer puts white into a color to make it lighter. You don't have to put a real light in there, but if you wanna make your dark colors light, a little bit lighter, 
just add a white. It's just the same thing the manufacturers do for certain colors. It doesn't make sense to not use white. I just, I think it's in schools that are telling you not to use it because they don't want you to just correct mistakes, you know, and, and just do that. But when you're doing something like this, where you want some lighter colors, um, add a little bit of white. It'll make them more pastel-like. So now what I want to do is I want to take the masking fluid off because it's time. And um, while this is um, this is all dry now, I'm going to take the masking fluid off. And so that way I can do the hair. That's the last thing I'm going to do. It's the darkest part. And so that's detail. And so I'm going to take all this masking fluid off. I'm using a rubber cement pickup. It's just a piece of rubber. And I'm just going to tap, tap it down straight down and definitely make sure your, your paper is dry. You don't want it um, even damp or anything. It just, it'll come right off like this. This is a Stonehenge paper, and usually it's a little bit tough on this, but because there's such small little marks, you can actually use it on this. I found it this afternoon, so I'm using the Stonehenge paper. Sometimes if you're doing large areas, and um, it may rip, but these are small little areas, and so it's not ripping at all. I'm just taking bouncing it off of there. Probably a boring part to watch, just me taking off masking fluid. Back and forth, back and forth. I can just rub it. And how you put the masking fluid on is I use a small little round brush. They actually sell these brushes at Jerry's Artorama, I think. Um, they're called um, masking fluid brushes. These little ones. This is a little one. It comes with uh, four of these and four of these little bit bigger ones. And um, they're great because I don't put soap on them or anything. I just dip them right into the dip them right into the masking fluid and just a small little brush. I just drew up and you have to draw up exactly what you want you have to make it look just because it's such a hard edge that you cannot just dab it down and not think about it you really have to make sure that they look like the flower that they are like make them if they're daisies really go in there and try to make them look like daisies and the hair make it real thin lines so there we go we got that and we did some up here get this off of there and just do little tappings um don't try to get it all big that, that will tend to rip it too. So it's how you take it off that really matters. You do it slowly and you just kind of tap down, especially on paper that seems to rip a lot, take it straight down. Just kind of tap down and pull up, like use them neither of a razor. If you rub it with your hand, a lot of times it picks up the paper. So if you take this and then just see how I push down and it kind of grabs it and pulls it straight up. So a little bit better way of making um, a paper that kind of tends to rip a little bit, not rip it. And I let it, I let it pull, I let it pull off real quickly. See, I'm just pulling it up, and it comes right on there. It took me a while because I, I was ripping a lot of paper um, a lot of times because this paper is a little bit different from Arches. Arches is a little bit tougher a paper, but uh, I love the fact that this stays on top, and so it does rip a little bit. But you can just, like I said, tap, tap your needle or your rubber cement pickup. So now you got your whites back, and um, like this area is a little bit too white, and so I'll go in there and I will get the dark speck in there. At the same time, negative paint some of the hairs. I'm gonna paint a little flower in the front of her, um, front of her hat there, and so I'll maybe make that a little bit yellowy pink. Salmon, salmon is kind of yellowy pink, right? So I'm just gonna go in there and make that a little bit of salmon color. So it's pink and orange, make it kind of a salmony color. Put that into the hat a little bit. And then I'm going to put it in front of her nose since it's, um, I just felt that it's a little bit too much right there. All right, so now her hair, um, that's in the white, I'm going to take the same color and maybe get some of this hair, the hair that's lighter, that's in the sun. Not the dark stuff yet. The dark will come. The dark's the last thing you do. You have to first get all these little lights things going. Now, this area right here was really bright again. So what I did there was wrong because I want to make this soft. And like it, the sun's really bright right there. So I'm going to wet that a little bit, get that soft again, soft edged, make it look like it's really bright. And there's going to be a hard edge right here, a little shadow on everything when I do the darks. All right. And, and now the um, flowers, I'm going to get them done. And so what I'm going to do is take so a few of them and put their little bud or their little stems on them. Little stems. How are we doing in time? 19. Okay, we got 10 minutes. Right, we'll get it done. I always get it done in time. One hour. 
So here we're going to go and do a little bit of stems and leaves and stuff like that. Leaves and stems, leaves and stems. You can switch colors a little bit, maybe a little bit of orange. The ones that she's holding, maybe she's a little bit darker. But this is negative. Um, this is the part where you want most of your center of interest to be, and so you want a nice contrast right here, right in that area. I know it's kind of in the middle of the painting. That's okay. We're going to have this dark hair, and it's going to bring everything to the side a little bit. It's the weight of the painting, how it looks, the weight. How does the painting, does it weigh to one side? Does it go a little bit to the left or right? It's almost like you put it on a scale, and you kind of look, does it feel, you know, like it's, because it darks over here, we're going to have to put a little bit of dark on this side. And, of course, there is the flowers themselves. They have the center. What other colors are the center of daisies, anyways? Oh, uh, yellow. Yellow, orange. So we'll put little round dots in the daisies here. Little orange dots. And now we're at the detail stage. We're at the dark stage where you're putting the darks in. And don't make all your daisies round. Make some of them oval. Make some of them where you just see the side. You know, it's you don't want to make them all rounded, straight round like they're facing at you. So what you do is make them oval. Make them the sides longer and in the front a little bit shorter. Always variety. Variety in everything you do in the painting. And a few dots here and there. You can even spatter this a little bit. I think it would help a little bit too. Spatter a little bit in there and spatter a little bit of white. That would look like there's still some masking. Oh, oh, what did I do there? The, the, the good old, oh, oops. Oh, <laughs> the little Homer Simpson. A little hairs in here. Okay, let's do her hair now. So her hair is dark, and so I like to use my rigger brush and this number eight brush because I'm going to be using them both. For the long strands, I use the rigger brush because it will give me a nice long strand, and I'm going to use kind of a brownish, purple brownish colors. So I'm mixing that with a, this is a midazolone brown, a midazolone, which is a really weird name. It's kind of a purpley brown. And so I'm going to start with the, the, that to come down here, and I'm waving them. I'm doing a wave, not straight down. It just didn't look right. It looks, looks a little bit nicer if you give them a little wave. And I'm going to make them a little bit. I'm going to make her a redhead. Make her a redhead. There we go. And then there also, this is where I will go in front of the face now and create the front of the face. So I know I... It's going to be really important that you get the shape of the nose and everything with the dark. And so I'm going in there and doing the shape of it. It's more important that I get the shape of the face than actually doing the hair itself. Because the hair um, is just going to be the dark, but I want to get the shape of the face with the dark of those lines. And then every once in a while you'll take and do a lighter, a lighter value, like the orange and the yellows. You'll actually just put some of that orangey color in there and just let it bleed because not everything has to be a line in here some of it you want to make it so it looks kind of like it's um, not a line it's just a big wash of color and that's a good thing getting it in there and getting some of it just to look like it's coming together because you don't have to show every single strand of hair i'm not that kind of painter i can't do that where i do every strand of hair i know there's a lot of artists that copy the photo and make every strand of hair my son included. Um, he likes to do every strand of blade of grass. Um, I do more of the impressionistic style where I kind of go in there and get parts of it. All his own, whatever, whatever we're going to do. If you want to do every strand of hair, that's fine. But if you do every strand of hair here, that means there's other things you have to do more detail too. And so since I don't have a lot of detail in other parts, I can't do this. Um, like if I do a lot of detail here, it's got to be super detailed right in her face. Any other questions you want to answer before I get this? It's going to be done in about, let's see, about 10 minutes. We're going to go over a little bit. Now over here, 
I'm going to get this dark color too. And if I look at the picture, let's see, it's kind of dark right in here. I'm going to get the big strand, the big, um, the big washes, and then I'll put the little strands as it goes away from that big area. And this is detail, so spend your time on detail. Don't rush through this part. Even though I'm rushing through it to get it done by time, certain time, you don't have to rush through this part. This is actually a very important part because this is what makes it look good. This is what makes it everything look like what it is. Don't rush through this part. I'm a good rusher. I did a lot of that in the advertising agency I worked for. We had to rush to get the meeting done. So I'm, I'm used to doing that. You don't have to do that. In here and get the nice dark darks and get the nice little and these brushes my brushes come to such a fine point you can use any of these brushes to get the really fine little hairs but what is really nice is this one is the rigger because you can get super super fine and especially for those really thin little hairs that kind of are dropping over the shoulder here and come down here and then i gotta hurry and get this little dark over here her hat, oh, actually, her hat has some green in it, like there's a green stem of that flower. So I'll put a little bit of green right here. It's like a stem that's on the bottom of her flower. Her hat also I will put in a little bit of detail later, but I may not have time to do it on air, and so I may do it afterwards. And so here it's going to be all nice and dark, and I'm going to use my bigger brush again, get this in there. Squiggly lines are just if you drink a lot of coffee before you do this, or cheers, everybody, have a beer. Cheers, everybody. Ah, so that makes it much easier. I'm going to have a glass of wine. It is the evening, the evening paint along, so. Here we go. We're going to put a little darker right here. If there's something you made a mistake on, this is a good time to just go over with the brush you can just kind of hide things and inside her hair there get a couple of those like through this area and then look at these waves you gotta make them the waves it makes everything by having the waves and having it all just in there it just makes it so much better than just straight Kind of gives it the feel of this kind of painting. And it kind of whimsical with its. And there's some masking fluid there to turn back to white. And then let me just get the detail of the dress. Like there's going to be some dashes of dark in here. And then I'm going to do. I'm going to give the pattern. There's a little bit of pattern in there of like little marks of black. Which is good for the yellow. Yellow and black are a good combination. buy this dress but <laughs> all right let's see what else we have left here we have the face so let's say put on makeup put on the makeup let's see i'll put lipstick on her and uh, put on her bottom lip i'll put a little i'll leave a little space for the highlight maybe a little bit red or orange you depend on what you need to put on there i made it a little bit too orangey so i'm gonna add a little red to that top lip can be a dark a little bit darker no, I think it's too much, too much lipstick. <laughs> it's supposed to be a young girl. It's not really that much red on there. So I'm going to tap it a little bit. And then um, we can put a little bit of mascara on her with her eyebrow, eyelashes. One minute, one minute, we'll be done. And then um, can I take this masking fluid off? Yep, there's the masking fluid off of that part. And let's put, the last thing I'll do is I will put the um, little dots in her hat to give her hat kind of a, um, that lace kind of look. So I'll put the little, little dots here and there and there. I don't have to do it on the whole hat. I can do parts of the hat and it'll look very lacy. And I'm going to tap it because it's a little bit too dark. Almost 
done. There's a little mask right, right here. Take that off, light. Look at that from a distance. I think that's going to be it. Now, yeah, okay, let me see what it looks like without the tape, and we'll be done. Another Thursday. Um, look for another one next week. We're going to do another one next week. Never, I'm never quite sure what we're doing until about Tuesday, because you can get my newsletter. Remember to get my newsletter, floatyourpigment.com. Uh, Float Your Pigment is a newsletter at davidrbecker.com. And I mean, you sign up for it there on my on my website. You can do everything on my website. You just go to my website. You can find everything I'm doing and all the workshops I got coming up. A lot got canceled, but we're getting some of them back. And so I'm going to be in Florida in January and February. So if you're down there, let's see how that looks. Is that side. So let me show you a close up once. Just as always good to see a close up. There it is. So you can see when you get see a lot of close up. All righty, there you have it. Please send me your, um, go on Facebook and send me uh, the ones you guys did last week with the crowd scene um, that I did of the um, guy on the grill. A wonderful job you guys did on that one. Really beautiful stuff. So please post them on my Facebook page, David R. Becker. Always put the R in there for my David R. Becker. Post them on Facebook and I'm going to start collecting them and putting them on my website just to show what I was doing with them. And you guys did a great job with the last one last week and so let me see what you do with this one i know there are figures a lot of them have been figures but we're going to get away from the figures probably next week and um, we'll start to try something else we'll see what we, we may do a still life next week but i'm not sure but uh thanks again everybody we will see you next week oh wait here i got um, one thing i gotta say goodbye right <laughs> i gotta go to this scene so so guys thanks a lot thanks a lot for everything and we will see you next thursday bye bye